In this Microsoft Fabric video, I'm going to walk you through on how to successfully use the data flow gen tool to connect to and append multiple Excel files resident in on-premise folder. After we've applied the necessary transformation in the Power Query online, we're going to proceed to publish the data to a newly created Fabric warehouse for further analysis. Therefore, let's get started. If you're new to the channel, please click on the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Let's roll into this presentation. I'm currently in the app.powerbi.com and of course, I've got this folder workspace with no fabric item. I'm going to come to this Excel file. In this Excel file, we basically have transaction 2014 that spanned across several columns from A to O. And I'm going to come to this folder. Now, in the folder, we have the 2014 to 2016. And our goal is to get all the files in this folder named Sales Excel Files into the Power Query Online. That is the data flow gentle for transformation and then for publishing to the Fabric Warehouse. Let's go on and do this. Now, I'm going to come to the web browser and of course now the first thing i want to do is to come to this download because we need to download the data gateway to connect to the on-premise folder so when you click on this go ahead and click on the data gateway this is going to launch a new tab for you which is cool and of course it is important you download the standard not the personal so once you download i'm going to show you how it looks like this is my on-premise data gateway so i'm going to go ahead and show you and you can see i've got this gateway which is all set up and of course i'm using this version which is as of, as at may 2024 so this is fine it's so easy to install just follow the prompt now after you've successfully installed the gateway i'm going to go ahead in this presentation on how to create the fabric warehouse which is going to be our destination from the data flow gen tool so i'm going to in this workspace click on this new menu and click on the more options at the bottom and i'm going to scroll down and select the fabric data warehouse so i'm going to call this one sales wh101 and then click on create data warehouse created and of course we can see we have the schemas and security with nothing i'm going to go ahead and click on this get data and i'm going to use the new data flow gen tool so i can go on and connect to the folder connector and then specify the path so this is the power query online almost similar to what we have in the excel and power query power bi power query so i want to come to the get data and choose the more option at the bottom and i'm going to search for the folder now we have the on-prems and the sharepoint folder now this is the cloud but this is the on-prems so i want to focus on this for today click on that and of course we need to get a folder path i'm going to come back here now this folder sales excel files is actually resident in my pictures okay so please pay attention i'm going to click on this white space and that's going to enable the path Ctrl C to copy head bag and I'm going to Ctrl V to paste in the footer path under the connection settings. Now, as soon as that is pasted, I can give in the connection name. Now, it is really important you will specify the data gateway because this is on prems So I'm going to choose from the non, choose my Cornerstone IT solutions. When I click on that, I'm going to see this selected connection as data gateway that is different than the project gateway. Committing will apply to all queries in this matchup. Okay, now this is actually not going to work. Okay, why? Because to get data loaded or stored in your folder on premise, it is important we set up the connection in the um, the governance environment. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and I'm going to close this uh, for now because you have to close it for, to step out. So close that Power Query online. And what I'm going to do is come to this settings and under the resources and extensions, I'm going to click on the manage connections and gateways. Now, when I click on that, having installed the gateway, I can click on this on-premises data gateway. And of course, mine is named Cornerstone IT Solutions. And of course, it's attached to this, my account. And of course, this is being used by two of my users in my tenant. And the status is online and then we have one gateways. So this is installed. Now, I'm going to come to the connections. Probably this may be new to you if you've not done anything around this environment, but it's so straightforward. Basically, we're going to have the names of the connection, the connection type, users, and the status, and the gateway cluster name. So I want to come to this tab, connections, and then click on new. 
And then we can specify the on-prems virtual machine or cloud. Our focus is on-prems, so this is selected automatically, and I can choose the gateway cluster name. Now, mine is Cornerstone IT Solutions, and now let's just call this one folder or sales folder. Okay, this is not going to work anyway, so let me just show you. Okay, folder. And I'm going to choose the connection type. I'm going to scroll down. Now, we have a bunch of connection type from Actress down to Z. So I'm going to scroll down, I'm going to focus on the F. So this is the folder. Click on that. And of course, I'm going to get the full folder path. Now I'm going to come back to the on -prems. Now, when I click on this white space, I can copy that again. Now, I can see I've got the C drive, the backward slash users, have the all backward slash pictures, and the sales Excel files. Control C to copy, Control or Alt tab to switch, and Control V to paste. Now, that's going to be what I want to paste in the full path and scroll down. Authentication, we're only restricted to the windows, so this is fine. But for me, I'm going to key or click on the skip test connection. It is absolutely not required for this case. And then for the general privacy level, I'm going to choose none and then click on create. It's going to be created amazingly. So this is fine. Created sales folder. I can close these settings and when I scroll down, I can see the newly sales folder folder created with the folder type, which is cool. Let's go back to the workspace folder and then click on the data flow one to relaunch the Power Query online. And then we can go back and point to that folder. So go ahead and click on get data and I want to go to more option. Of course, we can choose the recently used, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to set for folder again, click on that. And when I control V to paste, I'm going to get this the selected connection as a gateway and so on and so forth. Now, this is going to pick up the folder, the sales folder I just created, which is attached to my on-premises Cornerstone IT data gateway cluster name. So when I click on the next, let's see what's going to happen. This is going to throw an error. I might spend some couple of maybe three hours trying to figure out what is the cause of this problem. There we go. We have the invalid credentials, session ID, blah, 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 and then we have this region UK. I'm currently in the UK region. Now, this error or this um, problem is actually not meaningful. Of course, it is not really descriptive. So you probably may be struggling to find out what is the solution anyway. I'm going to show you the solution. So I'm going to cancel this and I'm going to close this for now. Okay, now go back to the on -prems. Now, for some unknown reason, when I copy this path, it's not going to work. Now, what I've discovered is I'm going to go ahead and press the backspace. I'm going to copy this whole thing, sales Excel file, Control X to cut. Come to this PC, I'm going to go to my Windows and come very importantly into this users. And then I'm going to paste within this user, Control V. And then click on continue. So we're going to have the folders here. Now this is one of the files open. Let me just close this file. Okay. Don't save and then retry. And there we go. We have the sales Excel file and there we go. Now this is actually going to work. So I'm going to copy this path. Now this has been narrowed down to users backwards slash sales. Previously we had users backwards slash ABL backwards slash says. So this actually was going to work. So you have to paste the whole thing in your user. So I'm going to control C to copy and go back to the platform and then I can recreate a new connection to folder. So click on the settings and I want to go to the manage connections and gateways and then click on new. Uh, before I click on new, let me just delete the one we just created in order not to cause confusion. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on this ellipsis and then remove. So we want to make sure that we don't have any folder type here. So I'm going to do the same thing for this. I want to delete. So that's it. All right, that's sorted. We have the SharePoint, Azure Cosmos DB, Lakehouse, and ADE, and so on. So I can scroll up. When I scroll up, I can click on Mail, and then I want to click or select the same data gateway cluster name. Let's just call this one uh, Mail Sales Folder. And I'm going to choose the type. This is going to be Folder. Scroll down and Oops, let me just do that again. I'm going to scroll down and I want to choose folder. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and control V to paste. Now, I believe this is going to work. So, again, for the authentication, I'm going to go ahead and skip test connection. And I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to choose for the general privacy level, none. Click on create. And this is beautifully created. Close the settings. And when I scroll down, we have the new sales Folder, okay, don't worry about the um, incorrect spelling. That's fine. Let's go to the folder workspace. I'm going to go back to the same data flow gen 2 and then go ahead and establish connection to folder on-prems. 
So let's wait. Go ahead and click on the get data and I want to choose the more option and I want to search for the folder for the last time. Now when I control V again, it's going to automatically detect the new sales folder. Okay. Now when I click on the next, yes, I'm going to bypass this troublesome get data environment, which is really important. Okay. Let's see. All right. Yes. Once you're able to see this preview day folder data, then you've successfully established connection to the folder. So this is perhaps the most troublesome part of the whole thing anyway. So we have the content name, name extension and so on and so forth. Go ahead and click on create. So this is going to actually create that in form of query in the Power Query Online. So let's see the content. So we have the sales Excel files. We have one query and then we're going to see the content. The name extension is .sl, XL, SX. And then we have the date access, modified, and so on. Basically, we'll actually get rid of every of these extended columns. So I'm going to right click on the content and remove all the columns. That is sorted. And um, we're going to have the data stored, each of the Excel files stored in binary format. So when I click on this white space, I'm going to wait at the bottom. I'm going to say this should be transaction 2017 or thereabout. Let's see. Okay, there we go. This is 2014. When I click on this white space, this is going to be 2015. And when I click on the last one, it should be 2016. Okay, let's just see that. Okay, that's fine. Now we can see if you're probably you know familiar with the concept of query folding. Now we can see this green icon tells us that this step will be evaluated by the data source. So this is going to be pushed to the source data, and that's going to actually improve the performance of our Power Query operation. And of course, we can see, oops, this step will be evaluated outside the data source. So this is going to be evaluated internally in the Power Query. And in this case, the query is not folding. But that's not what we want to focus today. So we have the content. Now I'm going to come to the Add Column tab, and I will extract the um, the name, the data, the items, and so on and so forth from this binary. So click on custom column, and then we can disregard the name, and I'm going to come here. Now, in the Power Query of Excel and Power BI, let's say I want to say use the Excel workbook. Now, I'm going to see in those in platform, the intelligence working, but for some unknown reason, the intelligence doesn't work here, which is so strange for me, but I'm going to go ahead and linearly type the whole thing, Excel, dot workbook now just like you probably know the e must be capitalized and then w must be capitalized because this is absolutely case sensitive so open the brackets now, as soon as i just press open brackets it's going to automatically give me the closing brackets which is a strange feature and good for me anyway so i can double click on this content when i double click i'm going to put in a comma now for the second argument of the excel dot workbook this is going to ask me to use or to promote error so i'm going to just type in true so this is going to actually give me or promote the headers into the um, from row one to the headers. So this is fine. Go ahead and click on OK, and we're gonna have the table dot add column, and then we have the previous tab, and then we have the custom, and for each of the rows in the Excel dot workbook, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna click on this white space, and when I click on that, I'm gonna see other things such as the name, the data, item, kind, and Eden. So click on the expanded icon and when I do that, I can go on and display the whole thing. We only want to focus on the data and then click OK. And then we're going to have the table dot expand table column. And then we have the previous step and then we have the call and the custom and so on. So I can click on this white space and then we're going to have the content for the 2014 and then we can see the first row is promoted automatically used as the header which is beautiful so this is going to be 2015 when i investigate and it's going to be 2016 which is super cool now i can go on and click on this expandable icon and then go on and just click okay because these are all the columns anyway from the row id down to the last column the profit click okay and that's going to automatically append or stack the data in the same order from 2014 to, I believe, 2017 or 16. So there we go. So I can go on and with the column selected, the whole column selected, I can come to the transform tab and then use the detect data type. Because for now, we have the ABC123, ABC123. This simply means no or general uh, data type specified. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the detect data type. This is going to automatically detect data types across all the selected columns, which is really important for me. So there we go. So we have the one, two, three, 
for the whole number data type. We have the icon for the calendar, and then we have the ABC for the text, and so on and so forth. So I want to get rid of this content, right-click, and remove columns. It is of no use again, which is cool. So we have the order dates. And of course, we're going to load the data into the warehouse, which is our destination. So this automatically picked up. Why? Because we actually click on the get data right from the fabric warehouse. So this is fine. Now, I want to come to this order date. And in the order date, I just want to extract the year column. So make sure the order date is selected. I want to come to the add column tab, not transform, but the add column tab. And then click on the calendar. I want to choose the year, and I want to choose the year. And this is going to be inserted for me at the far right. There we go. 2014. When I click on this and load more, I'm going to see 15 and to 16, which is cool. Click cancel. That's br brilliant. So basically, these are all the transformation we want to apply. Let's just rename. Let's just call this one um, append sales files you can give any name press enter to commit and then we can go on and publish to the destination this is selected automatically go ahead and click on this and you can publish right now or later but we're going to publish right now so go ahead and publish okay so the data has been successfully published to the fabric warehouse i can click on this ellipsis and of course i should be able to see all these more functionality like the export to JavaScript object notation. I want to come to the refresh history. When I click on that, I'm going to see this succeeded status, which is cool. And it took um, 50 um, seconds, and then we have the on-demand tab. So this is fine. I'm going to close this tab, and let's go ahead and check them out in the sales WH101 way out. So when I click on that, there we go. We have the append sales file. Click on that, and let's see all the content in the table which is cool we have the row id the order date the ship date when i scroll to the right you can see my numerical columns with the appropriate data types and then the year column now this is brilliant now let's go ahead and perform a simple query i'm going to come to this new sql query and then want to create a new all right let's say we just want to perform a simple analysis such as the um, total sales by year so i'm going to go ahead and write the sql code so i'm going to perform select and i want to call the year column and i want to put in the comma and the sum function i want to sum the um, sales column so press the tab key and i'm going to call this one as the total sales so total sales that's going to be the alias and i'm going to point to the name of the table from i can even drag this append um, across this is absolutely fine press enter and i can use the group by clause so the group by so i'm going to go group by the year column and press the tab key enter i can even order by let's order by the sum of the sales and close the brackets and we can do this by descending order so let's go ahead and run this code and let's see the results okay there we go. So we have the total sales by the year 2014 to 16, and this is sorted based on the total sales. This is basically how you can use the Power Query Online, that is the Dataflow Gen tool, to successfully establish connection to files in an on-premise folder, and then transform the data, load to the Fabric Warehouse, and then perform some analysis. I trust you in this video. If you do, like, share with your friends, and comment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.